and welcome to Attic Mini Eats. Today I'm making my own creation. This is like one of those things I never found a recipe for on Google. I made it up myself. It's feta and spinach stuffed beef roast. Let's go. Okay, the usual suspects for this meal will be a uh, Western Griller London broil, some baby spinach, feta cheese, and some little red potatoes. These things are amazing because they cook quickly, they're very creamy, and my wife thinks they're absolutely adorable. Okay, first thing you want to do is you want to open up your Western Griller here, put it on your cutting board. I always say get the uh, poly cutting boards because they're easier to deal with when it comes to bacteria and such. The wood ones just soak up all that bacteria and that's not good. Okay, take this line of fat off. Typically you want to keep fat on something but not this because we were going to butterfly this. Now butterfly is not the hardest thing. Let me take this out of your way. There we go. What you do with the butterflies, you just basically cut down the center like so. And you keep going until you can spread it open. See how it's opening up very nicely like a book? Now you don't want to go too far. If you go too far, what's going to happen is it's going to cut completely in half. You want to get to about a half to a quarter inch, but watch your cuts because you don't want to go down too deep. There should be one more away and I should be able to flip it right open. Excellent. Now, after I throw away this, if you look at the cupboards here for something to cover it with, hot wax paper will work just fine. You want to take wax paper, or in any case, nine times out of ten you want plastic wrap, but I'm devoid of it, and you want to get your tenderizer. You want to pound it out like this, push it down along the edges. Spin that around and continue again. And you want to keep going until it's about like a quarter inch thick. All right, let's get it going here. Spin it around again. for is a bigger surface area because the bigger the surface area we have the better the stuffing will be the better the rolling will be and the better the pinwheels will look so let's take the paper off it's about where I want it maybe a couple more hits down the line here might actually help me out all right that right there now the next step is to take a nice pair of scissors and cut open your bag of spinach. Now this isn't the hard part right here. The hard part is actually going to be rolling and tying. But what you want to do is you want to go very, very liberally with the spinach on the inside. Because the spinach is going to be one of the better parts of it all. What's great about this meal, it's not really that fancy of a meal, so anybody can make this at home if you're into spinach and feta cheese. I always tell people, you don't got to be Greek to like feta, you just have to have, you have to think it's delicious, like I do. I can eat feta in almost anything, for the most part. Okay, now that we got all our spinach on there, we want to take our feta out. Again, you'll need your knife and scissors to pop the seal open. Then, just take our feta. And then we'll uh, go to the house. Okay. Then you put all your, as much fit as you really want. Some people can use a lot, some can use less. What this is going to do is this is still a cheese, so it's going to melt it and bind. Excuse me, I need a drink.
I'm a little under the weather, so bear with me. Excuse me. <coughs> okay. And a good note is, every time you cough and you're in a kitchen, do not cough into your hands. Always like the president taught you, as Liz Lemon would say, into your elbow. Okay, now, let me quickly wash my hands. 20 seconds. Okay, now, dry them off, and this is where we go into the good stuff. This is the rolling tying part. Now, you're going to need butcher twine for this. What we do is take it like this and roll it as best you can straight down. Kind of like you're rolling your socks for your luggage. Okay, so once we have that done, now mind you, things are going to stick out, things are going to pop out. That's bound to happen. Whenever you stuff a roast of any kind, things are going to come out. Now, you want to take your twine, cut off a goodly amount. You want to take your twine and, you want to get a little closer? And you want to go in like this. Tying the one end first. I always tend to use a slip knot. I think Alton Brown taught me that one. I'm pretty certain. You want to get that far enough so you can tie that down. And then you want to kind of... So you don't want to pick it up. That was dumb. But hey, you're going to make mistakes when you're cooking something. That's the whole point of it. The whole point of cooking is to make mistakes. So you take this down and try to slide this underneath and then bring that down like that tighten it and then again we want to lift it as minimally as possible otherwise that explosion you saw will happen to yours and if you have something like that you know what man don't get discouraged never get discouraged Getting discouraged makes you quit. And quitting is the probably the worst, single worst thing you could do when you're learning how to cook or you're making meals. You don't want to get discouraged whatsoever. Because you know what? It's not the end of the world if you make one simple mistake. Own up to your mistake and say, oh, look, I messed it up, sorry. And then try again. Never hurts to keep trying. Now, this last piece, you're going to take it like this. All the way through. You love when a string just knots when you don't want it to. And you pull up like that, pull that down, cut off your excess. Should have used the knife the first time. And you want to put this right in the pan here. Now, you collect what you fell out, and you can also lift this up now that's tied and kind of like push it on in if you want to. Now, mind you, it, some is going to leak out. I'm not going to say to you, oh, it's not going to leak out. That's what happens at the ends of roasts that are stuffed. Okay, now, I'm going to go and preheat my oven to 350 degrees. And then I'm going to take my knife. Where did I misplace that? <clears throat> Here we go. No, you don't have to, but I kind of like taking these potatoes and cutting them in halves. You tend to get more mileage out of them. Now, this will really produce a lot of, like, uh, liquid, so you don't really have to worry about greasing the pan. But, if you would rather grease the pan, I'm not going to sit there and blame you. Okay, just keep cutting until you have the desired amount of potatoes you want. Okay, now we got all our potatoes completely cut. You have your oven preheated to 350 degrees. It's going to look like this going in. Now, if you're doing this with me, this is what you should be at right now. If you're not, that's okay. You might be doing something different. I don't know, but we'll put this in our oven. And we'll come back to it in about 45 minutes. 30 to 45, just to be safe. All right, so that beeping means that our roast is done. 
165 is the optimal temperature for pretty much any food. Yeah, I know, beef would go 145, but they always say, go higher if it's stuffed. So we're gonna turn off our oven and take it out of the oven so we can have a good look at what we made here. Now, as you can see, the potatoes should be done. Make sure. Yep, nice and soft. Soft enough, you know. You know. I need to find a utensil to pull this out with. Ah, there we go. I broke the tongs. Yeah, we'll put it right back on the cutting board. Now, <clears throat> again, you want to watch your fingers because this is pretty hot, but you want to cut the rope, the twine off. so and this way we could unravel it and you can see what you did to this rose now as you can see here the twine itself causes it to stay the way it is now when you're cutting this you got to be careful first of all like you just, if you just sharp this knife like I did you want to be careful because you can hurt yourself but when you cut it you see this end part it's still edible you can still eat it just take it off, move it over, and each pinwheel should look like this when done. Just cut it nice and thin, or just as thick as you want. And then that is good. Now, plating. I know I typically use TARDIS plates, but this is all I have. Okay. You want to get a spoon for your potatoes. You know, mix them up a little bit. They're going to stick because that's what they do after being in the oven for a while. But they're not as bad as if you were leaving them in for like, you know, 45 minutes to an hour. And he greased it. Always grease your pans, but me, I really don't tend to. Look at that. And maybe... Take a couple pieces here and do it up like that. And there is your feta spinach stuffed roast with red potatoes. Now, as always, this recipe I actually created. I didn't go this up like I said in the beginning. And uh, all I can say right now is I exist in every adequate eats. Please be adventurous in the kitchen. Learn new techniques, learn new things, have fun in the kitchen. Too many people go out to eat anymore, and it's a shame that nobody wants to cook. You can make cooking fun, you can make cooking easy. Now, uh, as always, at the end of my video, I'm going to have a link to the playlist, a link to the last episode, and a nice little subscribe in the middle. Thank you, have a great night, and good eating. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh,